Hey, my name's Jovan and I'm a 3D layer artist working in the animation industry. This is part two of a three part series on how to get the most out of your 3D cameras in Blender from my experience. Part one is about the basics of 3D cameras. Part two, which is this one, is about constraints. And part three is about creating a custom control rig for your camera. If you're starting as a complete beginner or a 3D veteran, I hope you can use some of these tips or tricks to help level up your 3D cinematography game. In this part, we'll be going over the six essential constraints and controls to apply to your camera to make your 3D cinematography game that much easier and smoother. For all these tools, you need to select your camera, go to the constraints tab on the right hand side, and then click add constraint. Tool number one is the clamp tool. You can use this tool to, as it says, just clamp the camera to a path to make sure that the camera doesn't actually leave that path. It can be super helpful in shots where you've got a predetermined pathway that you want a character to go down, and you can just have your camera set to the same kind of pathway and have whatever sort of curve determine the route that your camera takes. Click cyclic if you want to make it cycle and go on indefinitely, although I don't really see why you need to use this too much. And then to animate it, you can just do it as if you're animating a regular camera. So just use your X, Y, Z axes and just animate as usual. And you'll see that your camera will be clamped to this curve. Tool number two is the track to tool. This is great for any sort of tracking shot, like a car chase scene, or if you're following a character or an, act or an object with action on it. So to do this, you need to have an empty or an animated object to control your, where your camera is looking. Tick target Z if you want to enable roll as well, which can be super helpful too. The third tool isn't actually a constraint. It's a navigation mode called fly or walk mode. This is super helpful for quick and easy navigation in Blender and is really great if you want to scout out a bunch of angles really quickly. It can also be helpful if you want to do any sort of super smooth flying around animations. It kind of feels like you're playing a video game in your, in your scene. So to do this, just go to the top corner, press view, navigation, and set a shortcut by right clicking and pressing add shortcut for both fly and walk navigation modes. I've got shift F and control F for each one of these. I actually found these from a tutorial from I think Iridesium is the name. I'll put the link in the description down below. And it was a really great tutorial on how to make cinematic shots as well. So definitely check out him. He's got some great tutorials on there. This is great for your sort of drone and gimbal like shots as well. And if you want to keyframe all the movements that you're doing, just click the auto key button down the bottom to preserve all the keyframes of a move. And then you can smooth these out and edit them later in the graph editor. Tool number floor is the floor constraint. This is super helpful for any sort of indoor or ground level shot so you don't accidentally clip through the floor. You can set the offset as high or as low as you want as well. So if you want like the bottom that the camera can go to be at like foot level, that's help. That's super helpful as well. Tool number five is the follow path tool. This is like the upgraded version of the clamp to tool. Just like the clamp tool, it allows you to set your camera and clamp it onto the tool as expected, but you can also then move past it as well into infinity. You can also just use the curve as kind of an influence so it's not locked exactly to that point. Meaning that the camera doesn't have to sit on the curve but can kind of instead follow its path. There are also better auto animating tools with this curve. So if you want to, you can just click animate path for the curve animation to happen automatically. And if you want to change the timing of this, just click on the curve, go into its properties and you can change how long this goes for. So to do that, you just click curve path animation and adjust the frames there. If you want the camera to follow the direction of the curve, you can click follow curve as well. And that will just point the direction in whichever way the curve is facing. The final tool, tool number six, is the limit location and rotation tool. This is super helpful if you've got like a limited area that you wanna shoot. For example, say like you haven't made the rest of the scene or like you don't want the camera to go behind you or do anything a little bit confusing, you'll have an exact section on where you wanna shoot. This can be great for doing that. So to do this, you can just put in the limits for the minimum and maximum movement for both location and rotation, and it can stop you from accidentally facing a direction you don't wanna use. A final little extra tip on top of this is to combine some of these tools together. So what I like to do, is combine something like the clamp to or follow path tool and join one of those up with the track to tool. This can be really helpful because it means I can have the camera automatically animating down a pathway. So say I'm like walking down, a, I've got a character walking down a corridor and I've got them moving along. I can then also have the camera itself tracking to their hand movement if they're holding something in there. So say they wanna unlock, unlock the door, I can have them take the key out of the pocket, it will track them doing that and then put the key into the door and it will follow all that movement perfectly, which can be really, really cool for some nice like beautiful tracking shots, which makes the camera feel super realistic. And that's it. Those are my six tips and tricks on how to use constraints in Blender to get the most out of your cameras. If you enjoyed this, please do leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. And if something doesn't work for you, I'll try and respond for them down there as well. If you're interested in watching more about cameras in Blender, check out last week's video on the basic entrance to cameras, which goes over using focal lengths, using the camera curve editor and a whole bunch more. And if you're interested in how to make a basic camera control rig, check out the next video in which I'll go over how to set up one of those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.